<laughs> okay. This is a little bit crazy for me. Um, instead of actually seeing you guys, um, I'm seeing what is happening like three seconds ago. So um, we're gonna just not watch <laughs> too closely. Um, but anyway, I'm super excited to be with you guys today. Um, this is going to be really fun and we're going to have a lot of fun. So Nancy, hi, good to have you here. I'm just finishing setting up a few things. Um, of course, today we are talking about brushes and we are talking about falling in love with brushes, which is what I do every time I paint. Um, and so while we wait for everybody else to get here, I'm just pulling out a couple things. Um, if you're painting with like painting along today, we're gonna use just our regular setup. Um, I've got my paint and some brushes, and then we're gonna talk so much about paint brushes, which I absolutely love um, doing because, okay, so the paint that you use is really important. And we all have our favorite brands and we have our favorite colors and, and that's all great, but the brushes are like, our best friends, they're who paint with us. They're the person that's in between us and the kids. So unless we're finger painting, um, the brushes are what actually touch the kid. And so they're so important and they're such a special part of what it is. So I'm just getting my thumb ready and we're good. Okay, let's get started. Um, so if you have questions, absolutely put them in the chat. Um, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, let me show you what my brushes look like right now. So, oh, and of course we're getting stuck on things. Okay, so here are my brushes. And as you can see, I have lots, right? Um, I can even raise them up a little bit. Um, and it's nice to have a lot of brushes. If I was going to go to a gig and I had to bring the minimal things necessary, I would bring a big flat brush for my one stroking. I would bring um, newer-ish quality round brushes. So I would have one that is just for black and then one that is for everything else. And then I would probably bring a tiny little detail brush. So now we're up to four brushes and I would want a filbert. So let me find, okay, so here we go. All right, so we've got my top five brushes. Now, don't like try and zoom in and figure out which brand these are because it, you'd be fine with a lot of different brands. But um, it's important to know that every single brush in your kit has, we can even put this up here so that we can see it all the time. It's so pretty. Um, every uh, brush in your kit has its own job. And so by knowing what brushes um, can do for us, it really makes an enormous difference in what we're able to do. Um, okay, so let's get started with getting to know these individual brushes, what they can do, and um, how to make our life amazing. So Halloween is just a week away. I hope you guys have all the Halloween gigs that you could possibly want. Um, if you want Halloween gigs, I know it's kind of a a holiday that I look forward to and I dread um, at the same time. So, but luckily, you know what? There are holidays for all of us. Okay, so we're gonna just be using um, the Ultimate Face Painting Block. I absolutely love this. Um, it's by, I can't ever, Sparkling Faces, but I wanted to give you more than that. Anyway, um, in the post about this live, um, I talk about them a little bit but it is fabulous because it lets you paint on paper, which makes a big difference for how the paint takes. When you're working on plastic or even like silicone or something, um, it doesn't absorb moisture the way that skin does. And so I love painting on paper um, and having a cute little kid uh, to paint on is really nice. All right, so I am going to hop over here and um, just adjust a couple things real quick. There we go. Okay. Marvelous. This is perfect. I can see, you can see everything is happy. All right. So here she is. 
um, she comes in, she wants a face paint and we want a face painter, right? Um, and so we're getting ready to do it. And it's Halloween. Oh, and I love that you guys can still see me a little bit. That's great. Um, feel free again in the comments, say hi or whatever. I'm I'm totally, I love that today I have it set up so that I can actually see and respond. Um, all right, so as we go in for this design, I wanna start um, talking about sparkling faces brushes. So in this class, we're gonna just primarily use these brushes and they are great. Now, every brand, has its own signature thing, right? We have different colors of handles, we have different um, things, but they all have um, like the same names and the same um, styles of brushes. So you can get a round brush in any brand. Um, and what you wanna pay attention to as you look at a brush, we've got the body of the brush, we have the length that the handle has. So this is the handle. Um, if you can pay attention to what's written on the brush, because what will happen is you will get a brush like this and you will love it and you will use it and you'll just be so happy. And then you'll end up rubbing this off and then you'll run out like the brush will expire and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I need a new brush. And you won't remember what it is. So, um, it can be important to pay attention to what's on the brush. Then we have the ferrule of the brush. That's this little metal piece. And luckily in face painting, it's a lot harder to destroy and ruin this brush, um, the ferrule, than it is in any other kind of face paint or any other kind of painting. So oil paint, acrylic paint, you've gotta be really careful with this. But with face paint, we're usually pretty good. You guys know care of brushes, never put them upside down in your water. Um, but let's go through and let's get to know every single brush we have. So we're gonna start with a filbert. The reason we start with a filbert is because this is the brush that I use first when I'm face painting most of the time. And so we have a fil uh, ferrule right here that has been smashed. And that's how we get this really nice flat shape. It's this way on filberts and on round brushes. And then they've trimmed the bristles to be in a nice little arch. I like to think of these as my crayons. So if you are going to draw something and you are going to color it in, you would use a filbert, right? And that's where we start with face painting is with the coloring part. So we're going to take this brush and load up a bunch of orange and we're gonna paint a little pumpkin. Now for Halloween, pumpkins are my favorite thing to paint because they're cute, they have a lot of fun um, and we can go in any direction. You can make a scary pumpkin, you can make a happy pumpkin, you can make a beautiful pumpkin and that's just really nice. So a Filbert is the perfect brush for pumpkin painting. So this is just the shape of a pear. There we go. And then with the orange still on my brush, I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna load some red on top of it. So I didn't even like dip it in the water or anything. And what that does is it gives me a little bit of a darker orange for these two side pieces. Now, because the original orange is still on my bristles, I'm able to have it all show up and look nice like this. Now, I like to have three or five um, sections to my pumpkin. We're gonna stick with three here. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, oh my gosh, game changer, Diane. That's amazing, I'm so glad that you like this. Okay, so we've got our cute little pumpkin. Now we want to add, so my Filbert's work is done. Um, we'll probably come back to the Filbert in a little bit. Um, but now we want to get a flat brush and, um, I'm going to open a new brush actually for this. Um, a flat brush does such a good job with one stroking because you're able to collect all of the colors from your one stroke. So they come in a lot of different sizes. I find that the one inch flat brush is too big for the face. I don't like to use it very much. Um, it also has a lot of bristles. And when a brush has a lot of bristles, what it does is it picks up a lot of water. And that water is something that you have to control. Sorry, I'm sure that plastic is really noisy. Okay, so I like to have a three quarter inch flat brush. That's my favorite size of flat. And you wanna pay attention to the length of your bristles. So here in um, Sparkling Faces, three quarter inch flat, 
these bristles are nice and long. And what that lets it do is because we've got a little bit more length, we can actually load more paint. So it allows us to have a really full load. So we've got orange. The opposite side of the color wheel from orange is blue. So I'm gonna load some blue in order to just have this pop. So I do my first load and it gets me half the way up the ferrule. Now I've got a bunch of water up here in the bristles that aren't, isn't gonna help me at all. And down here, I don't have any at all anymore because it's full of paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paper towel like this. I'm gonna take these bristles and I'm gonna lay my brush down and then I'm gonna bend it up. So I get a little bit of paint transfer, but what happens is all the extra water that's here is now in the paper towel and it's not gonna run down my bristles and dilute them. Oh, hi Paige. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're gonna dip the tip back into the water and touch it on the paper towel. So we just washed out all the paint in the front of the brush. So now we have no paint, lots of paint, no paint. We load it again. This is a way of doing a double load, but what it allows us to do is by having so much paint in our brush, we can do all of our painting without having to go reload. So here we go. Now we're ready. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways to do a wing. Wings we use all the time in butterflies, right? And that's awesome. But when we do it here, it allows us to get a fairy or like whatever you wanna call this, a pumpkin princess. Um, okay, so I come straight out and wiggle down to the top of the eyebrow. If you have powder, you can fill this all in with powder. Um, I'm also gonna do a little break in the wing and do a little second wing right there. So now we've got that beautiful thing. I'm gonna rotate my brush. And you can see I've got paint clear up to the ferrule now because I took the time to load really well. Now I'm gonna go upside down in that direction. I'm gonna come from here and touch up there. And then I have a little window there. So I'm just gonna use the side of my brush and come over here. Now I want you to start thinking, if you wanna name your brushes, you have my permission, but you wanna start thinking of your brushes as individuals in the same way that like, say you're having a really crappy day. And you're like, oh, I need to talk to a friend. You know which friend you talk to when you're having a bad day, right? And you have a different friend that you talk to when you need advice. And you have a different friend you talk to because they're all different, right? Friends are different. The same thing is true of our brushes. So as we look at what job we have to do, we want to know what our brushes are capable of. If you pick up the wrong brush for a job, it's just not going to go very well and it's going to shake your confidence. And then it's gonna, anytime my confidence gets shaken, it just gets worse and worse until like, I wanna give up. Okay, so right here, I have a split. Um, if you don't like it, just go over it one more time, it goes away. If you do like it, be like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna start doing that every time. Look how beautiful that is and add it to the other side. You can even add a shadow wing on the inside by just giving yourself more of the little wiggly squigglies. And I think this is beautiful. I think it looks like petals of a flower or something, which is really nice. All right, now we have this little opening. This is the perfect place for a gem. You put, and in fact, I might have one. I was given some absolutely incredible gems and they're like blowing up my designs. They look so much better. Okay, so check that out. We can just gem that little baby right there, or we can get a bigger one and give that, oh yeah. It's just, it's gorgeous, right? And it connects everything together. Now, if you don't have gems in your life, we are going to do a little gem party um, later this year sometime because I love it. Um, but we can always do this with paint. So we can come right here. And in fact, this is the wrong brush. If you look, this brush is really big we want to have it be nice and tight. So we're going to switch over to another brush. So goodbye, flat brush. Goodbye, Filbert. In fact, we're going to bring the Filbert back here for a quick second. I would probably have done this at the beginning. So crayon brush, we're just laying down color. I'm loading up a little bit of brown and we're going to throw in a little stem right at the top. It's just an upside down teardrop and boom, that's really nice. Okay, so Nancy, I'm so glad that you asked. What brush for what job. 
Um, and this is where you get to play at, or just watch this video. Cause I'm going to tell you. So anytime you're drawing, I like to use, um, the filberts. Anytime you need to one stroke, I'll use a flat or an angle. And I'm going to show you an angle brush here in a second, but now we're going to do, um, a, a leaf. So I like to come out, lay down and pick up, come out, lay down and pick up. Now this is not a pumpkin leaf. Pumpkin leaves are a little spiky. They have a really weird shape. Um, and so the way that I do it is I do my regular leaf and then I just kind of put a couple little flicks as I go around. And now it's not a regular leaf. It looks other <laughs> and it works. So we'll add a little bit more to the greenery, but not quite yet. So we want to add a little bit more of our blue, but we want it to look pretty, right? And so because we need smaller, we're going to get an angle brush. Now, an angle brush is exactly the same as a flat brush. Right here. Look at these sparkling faces. I love it. Okay. So it's exactly the same, except somebody gave it a haircut. They just went in with a pair of scissors. Don't do this to your flat brushes. Buy angle brushes because it's not exactly true. But, and we've just snipped it off at an angle. What that does is it allows for more paint to be put into the brush on this edge. And it also allows us to have um, more elegance. So I like to think of the tip of this brush. It's almost like um, this brush is on its tippy toes. So this is a dancer, this is a ballerina, right? We've got this ability to do point. And so, um, this was put in with a flat brush. Now watch what we can do with an angle brush. It does all the same moves with grace. So I do my little load and then here we go in. Now I want the pumpkin to be what's most important, right? Not the princess. If the princess was most important, I would bring the tiara up on top of that pumpkin and hide it. But because the pumpkin matters, we need it to stand out. So when I get to the pumpkin, I stop painting. And you can see even that line is just really crisp because I'm on the tip of this brush. As I'm painting, I'm only touching the tip to the paper. I'm not touching the entire bristles. Now I want all the colors. So I'm gonna bring all those bristles down and tuck another one right there. And you can see, um, let me get rid of that glare for a quick second. You can see that we just get that really nice um, control over exactly what happens. We're gonna add one more right here. There we go, okay. So then over onto this side, we're gonna do this. Now, I think you guys would have told me if this was different for you, um, but can you just let me know, is the video in sync with the audio? Cause it isn't for me, but I'm just figuring that that's okay. So tell me if it's not, um, cause then I'll stop stressing about that. All right, so whatever you do on one side, do on the other side, we're just keeping these really tight in. And now we've got that little background, which is awesome. Okay. Um, oh, thanks, Nancy. Okay. Now we're going to go down to the bottom. So we can, we've got all these beautiful points up. I want to do a point down because if you see right here, this is pointing down and this is pointing down. This is the focal point of the face. And so everything is coming into that focal point, right? We want it to also come up to the focal point the way it is here, the way it is here. So we're going to come right here. And because I have an angle brush, I'm being able to, let me get my hand out of the way. I'm being able to get these beautiful lines right here. And we can just put in this nice little piece coming up here and then just use this side, the short side, so that we get the lighter color right there. And then I'm gonna just bring a little swoop in and a little swoop in and we'll outline the pumpkin so the connection doesn't matter a ton. But now you can see we've got the two wings and we've got this little cluster that has that pumpkin sitting right up on top. All right, so here, that is what our angle brush does. Now, something that people don't know that angle brushes can do, if this is news for you, like, oh my gosh, get ready to cheer. But you can flip the angle brush. So this was all done with the angle, the long part of the angle brush at the top. Now we're gonna flip it and we're gonna drag it out. So in whatever direction you're going, you can just bring those long lines out. I'm just touching down and just picking this up and it's like blades of grass. So in those beautiful um, flower arrangements that have those awesome 
like little wispy wheat pieces. That's what we're creating. And it just adds drama. Um, and so you can do it in a different color if you want or whatever. And this could all be green or it could be autumn colors, but I wanted that pumpkin to shout out. Okay, so this is a lot, right? Um, there's a lot going on. We need to define what matters and we need to pull it in. So this is our color layer. It's the first layer that we put in and let's just review. We've got Filbert does our coloring. Flat brushes do our one stroking. Angle brushes do our graceful one stroking or when you need a lot of control, you just use a smaller brush. Flat or angle, you know, go on a date with everybody before you decide who you're gonna marry right? Um, you'll find your favorites and that's great. But now what we need is we need to get some tight um, decor in here. So I love this pack of her brushes right here because it has this beautiful flora brush, which does some amazing things. I'll show you here in a second. And then it has all these different round brushes. This one right here is the number one liner. This is a number two round. Hold on, I'm finding the number one liner because you guys have to see what this brush does. It's so cool. All right, so it has longer bristles, but they're really small. And by combining those two parts, um, it allows us to get a really big load, like a lot of paint into the tiniest brush. So we'll use that here in a second. But first I'm gonna show you this floral br flora brush. Um, what this one is gonna allow us to do is it's going to allow us, um, it's a number eight, is it's like a filbert, except it's more of a point. So it's the same thing as the angle brush. It gives us grace by having those few bristles that, you know, escaped the haircut, um, we can do something beautiful and amazing. So I'm going to grab um, some white. Now white does not show up super well on camera. So We'll see if we can make this work. But if you look, we've got this green right here. Now yellow and red make our orange and yellow and blue make our green. So there's a lot of yellow. Even though we don't see it, there is yellow in this picture. So we're gonna go ahead and add the yellow. That way, hopefully you can see it better as well. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of red on the tip of my brush. So I'm just double loading this petal. And now we've got a beautiful flower. So I'm gonna come right at the base of my pumpkin and I'm going to just lay this in. Now, the reason I like to use a flora brush over a petal brush, I feel like I get more elegance because they're the same thing. Um, if you look at a petal brush right here, um, this is like a round brush. This is like a filbert, right? Um, and the only difference is that this one has had the ferrule smashed. Anyway, but what it does is it has like fewer bristles and they're bigger. So I get these big, pretty petals, but without all the bulk of that paint that often makes a mess. I, I am not the best double loader. Um, and I feel like this brush helps me with that. Okay, so then right here, we've got where it's sitting. But then I want to extend it. And so one of the things that we can do, and I'm gonna get that yellow back on my brush. I hate that double loading isn't something that we can just do real quick when you need to reload. Like you have to reload the whole thing and that's just not my favorite. Okay, I went ahead and I didn't do white this time. So it would show up a little better. I tell you, white is not a camera's favorite color. Okay, so we've got the beautiful colors. Now, because we're stretching the blue here, I'm gonna also stretch the petals and it just creates this pretty shape. And then we'll do one petal right on top. There we go. So now we have this nice, almost like U shape around the pumpkin. And then we can also bring these petals down into the corner of the eye. And that just extends the design in a really pleasing way. Okay. Now back to our green. I'm gonna get that number one liner brush. Some sparkling faces. This brush really is one that like I'm always reaching for. It is so fun to use. Okay. And um, pumpkins and grapes have these little vines in common. And they're so fun to paint. 
it's just these little squirrely loopies um and you can put them anywhere and everywhere um and they're just so fun so we're gonna go ahead and add one to the corner of the eye as well because again we just want to have everything connect all right so there we go there she is it's so nice okay now pumpkins can be pumpkins or they can be jack-o-lanterns so feel free to decide which yours is anytime you've got um uh something like a pumpkin or you know an apple or you know really any form that you want even a dinosaur this is true for you can add a highlight that is whatever color was there toned down. So if you just get white and then load the color, then you can come in and you can add these highlights that aren't as loud as a white highlight. Um, and I find that that is really nice in my work to not just have everything screaming at you all the time. Um, and then of course we need to use some white. So that brush that I did that with, that's a number three round. Um, as your rounds get bigger, the number of bristles increases, right? If you look at, okay, here's a number one versus a number three. So our bristles, we have more of them and they're longer. And so think of it as the bag that you carry your groceries in, right? Have you ever bought like a chapstick or something? And they, I don't know where they keep them the rest of the time, but out from under the counter, they pull out this tiny little bag and it's like, oh, wow, look. <laughs> um, anyway, so feel free to um, use a bigger brush, even if you're drawing dainty little things, because round brushes have points. And so you can paint the smallest little details with a number six or a number eight round. You just have to be really, really light, but you don't have to reload. Um, Anyway, okay, so next we are going to grab um, that number one liner again, and we're gonna load up white. Now, when you're loading your white for detail work, um, you wanna have a really full load. So we're getting it all the way up to the ferrule and I'm working it around until it's nice and creamy. Now, when I'm doing um, the load, I have a really wet pool of paint, right? And I know I'm gonna have to reload my white brush. I use white so much. But so instead of making this all the perfect consistency, what I like to do is I have two spots on my white. I have one spot that's really wet. And then once I have a wet paint, I come over here and I start loading. And this is the perfect consistency. So I've got a perfect consistency over here and I have a wet spot. So then when I'm adding my details and I come back, this has dried and is too dry, but this is the now the perfect consistency. And so I can get a second reload without ever having to go to my water. Um, that might be too much information, <laughs> but that might be the only thing you learned from the video. So uh, I'll keep throwing those tips out there. Hopefully that's helpful. Okay. So dots are one of my favorite details. Um, we can also detail with lines. When you put highlights in, what you're focused on is you're focused on where the light is hitting. That's what that highlight comes from. So if we just go in and we put white everywhere, it's going to look interesting and chaotic, but it won't feel right. So if you're looking at your work and you're like, something doesn't feel right, pay attention to where you're putting your highlights. I love to have little white dots in the corner. The inside corner of the eyes is just such a beautiful place. And honestly, thank you, dear, baby dear. Um, you can put little white dots right on the kid's cheeks and it makes them look young and it makes them look innocent. Now, before you just put white dots everywhere, know that I usually only pick two or three places. I don't do this many on all of my designs, um, but you can also do your white dots in a row. And that creates structure and order. So whenever I have them on like flower petals or under the eye, that's what I like to do. Now we've got a little flower center, a little white dot place under here. We can put our white dots. Okay, and then this next part, um, you won't be able to see again because it's white on the skin, but um, you can choose a couple different um, detail works for here. So wherever we put one of those little dashes out, 
you can follow it up with beautiful little teardrops. Um, and that can be really fun. And it just, again, adds that drama. So here you can see they're almost like whiskery uh, lines and it's fun. Um, autumn time is when all the beautiful things from spring have had to survive the summer and now stuff is starting to die and some stuff is already dead and it looks a little odd. And so it's really nice for us to be able to see what is looking a little odd. Um, it makes it look like autumn where if this was spring, we would have to pull it back and rein it in. Now, because we have this second little hidden loop, um, or not really loop, but the little second layer of uh, wing, we don't really need to add a lot of detail in there or it's going to mask that, it's going to cover it up. Um, but if you only do one, um, this is a great place to add some swirls or you know all kinds of things. We can also add a couple little teardrops further in, uh, this is just where you let your creativity go crazy. Um, I really love, I'll show you one more thing I really love. I really love brushes, you guys. <laughs> but these little tiny brushes, they just allow us to go in even with a heavier hand and still end up with some dainty work. So one of the things that's really pretty that we can do to these petals is we can outline them. Um, and you can outline it here with just like a little echo of the shape which you can see is really pretty and it just makes it kind of elevates it, stands out a little bit, or you can do straight little teardrops. Um, and it makes them look like a really feathery petal or almost like a firework thing. Anyway, so what is this? This is style questions. So you just look at it and you're like, okay, do I like that better? Or do I like that better? I love the little feathery looks. And then I'll often come out and like bring a swirl or something and make a mess. I love messes. Um, but so I'll just throw in a bunch of little strike marks there. And then we'll keep this side, the little loopy side. Pick one, don't do both. Um, and then you can bring down, you know, a nice swirl if you want, paint the lips, do all the things. Okay, so this is just color and white. That's all we've done here. Um, she's beautiful. And you can imagine, you know, if you do the wings in gold or something like endless variations here. Um, but I want to show you if we decide to put in a little bit of black. So I've got my number one liner again, and I'm just loading that up. Same things apply. I like to have a wet spot and a dry spot. Sometimes when you have multiple, like this is my wet, this is my dry, this is my medium. You end up with all these different little grooves in your paint. You may have seen people, or you may have grooves in your paint. And that's what causes that is because you're like looking for the perfect consistency. Now we're gonna come in here. And I like when I'm doing pumpkins to just do a thick to thin outline and then to stop. So on the outside of my pumpkin, I go all the way. And then I just flick towards the inside, but I don't go all the way. So I'm not connecting this line here with that line there. Um, and I just find that that is the way that I like it to look. Now up here, we could just outline that the same way, but I want to create a little bit of a 3D feel. So I paint a little swirl and that shows the top of where this pumpkin has been cut off. And then we just wanna make sure that this has a shape of a triangle because where it attaches to the pumpkin, um, or you can do hourglass would also work, but you want it to, I don't know, have some movement. Um, and I like that. And then I'm going to add a center line to my leaf, but I'm not going to outline the leaf. And here's why the pumpkin is what matters the most is the leaf, the pumpkin. No, it's not. It's its little friend. And so by not outlining the leaf, we're not confusing the viewer as to what really matters here. Your eyeliner, you want it to have it be the lightest color or the darkest color. And so we did it in white and that's perfect. Um, you can go in with black and add more black, but here's the thing. Black is the darkest color we use. And so wherever you use it is going to be the central focus. Where the central focus was my pumpkin, that's perfect. Um, and then of course, we wanna put on a little bit of bling. So I like to spot bling. So here's a little bit of gold. I'm gonna just pop it not too close to the eye, but in the corner there, in the corner here. And then I can just put it right at the base of my pumpkin and maybe a little bit right on top of the pumpkin. 
and then maybe get a little bit of the blue sparkle and add just a little blue sparkle, you know, or the white or whatever. Let's get some lips in there. Um, lip color to me, I like to use um, like a Q-tip or a lip wand to put it on, but I like to keep lip color natural. Um, so I'm going to load red and then just a little bit of orange to kind of bring out the pumpkin. Um, and we'll come right down here and we'll just get that on there. And then just the same way that we loaded another color, you can always take, um, you know, a lot more orange, like dip it in the water and then load it in the orange. And just by either like having that variation, even if it's subtle, it, you know, it's amazing how variation brings out. Oh, and you guys can't even see the variation, but I do love variation. I think it's so fun. Um, and then one of my favorite things is unexpected. So when somebody comes and they get their face painted by you, um, they have expectations, right? And they probably picked it from a picture on your board. And so they have the, okay, this is what I was expecting. Um, and so something as simple as adding some little trailing white dots that we have white dots up here. Now we have white dots down there and it was extra. And they're like, Oh, look what they did. They added that. That was so nice. That was so fun. Um, and it just, it makes a big difference. And that's what we're looking to do is we want to make that big difference for the kids. Okay. So we have gone through the, um, round brushes petal brushes, flora brushes, angle brushes, flat brushes, like lots, right? And they each have their different little jobs. Now I'm gonna give you guys some homework. Um, I hope you like it. Uh, and this is, I want you to play with your brushes. I don't want you to like set out to recreate this, um, but I'll show you how I want you to do it. I want you to take any brush that you never use or any brush that you use all the time, it really doesn't matter. And I want you to um, just get a regular piece of paper. Um, cardstock works better because it can take a little bit more water. And then I want you to take a color that makes you happy. So one of the colors that makes me happy is teal. Whenever I'm using teal on a face, I feel like teal came into popularity in the last like five years. Maybe it's because of Elsa, who knows? everything just blame it on Elsa um but so this is um a number eight angle so it's pretty small and you've got a color that makes you happy you've got blank paper you're not trying to create anything and you're trying to answer the question what can you do so if I just go for a run I get a nice thin line if I go for a run a run carefully I get a nice thin line if I try and do a little butterfly um, I get some fun little wiggly shapes. Um, so there we go. There's my fun little butterfly. Um, if I want to just do push down and pick up, push down and pick up. So this is me trying to do like a little flower. Now, does this look great? No, it doesn't, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to control my brush. I'm trying to listen to my brush, show me what it can do. So now I'm gonna try and do my little rainbow. So there's my little rainbow. That's how thick my brush can go. So now I know how thin it can go. I know how thick it can go. Now, if I do the rainbow with a lot of pressure, um, now be careful because pressure is hard on your bristles, but we can see, okay, if I wanna go really thick, that's how thick I can go. Um, I like to let my brush go crazy and see what that looks like. So, I'm right here and I'm just like, okay, let's just, let's just go crazy. Let's just make some marks. Let's see what you can do. Um, and you might be like, okay, but that looks horrible. I'm not going to take that and put it on a kid's face. I'll never get hired for a birthday party, but how cool would this one right here be as a unicorn horn? So I'll show you what I mean. Cause that's what it reminds me of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my nice big uh, flat brush. I'm going to load up a rainbow and I'm going to come and I'm going to do a thin rainbow swatch and a thick rainbow swatch. So here's my little rainbow. Okay. There we go. It's awesome. And now I've learned 
that I can get this really cool little squiggly thing in white. So I'm gonna grab the right color now. It's not a color that makes me happy. It's a color that is gonna work. And this is all just trial and error. What we're doing is we're playing. And sometimes when we play, we learn things about our brushes that then will completely change the way we paint. It will bring novelty to the industry. Can I tell you how happy I am when I see something that's like, oh my gosh, I've never seen that. And I totally got to try it. It's awesome. So we can start from the top down or the bottom up. And we're going to take this brush, a number eight angle brush for unicorn horns. Who knew, right? And we're going to take it and we're just going to let go crazy. And we just draw that little unicorn thing down our rainbow. And then um, we get the wiggles and the wobbles on the side. And you guys can't see it too well. But then what we do is we grab our black and I would normally let this dry in between, but we can come in and we can now outline. And now I have a unicorn horn that instead of the unicorn horn being rainbow, it's outlined with a rainbow. Do you know how hard it would be to outline with rainbow? It'd be miserable. But with this little technique, we now have a rainbow outline, which I think is really kind of cool. And in a certain application, it might be really fun. So it's, <laughs> Nancy, this is not the unicorn horn tutorial. We should totally do a full live on that. That would be fun. This is a random, like trying to show you how we could learn things from playing with our brushes. Um, but for example, I'll show you something that, that I picked up from um, brushes. Hold on. Okay. So with that same one inch liner, or not one inch, but number one liner. Um, this is, and I'm going to get the name wrong. I'm trying to remember, but this is a butterfly antenna. And you use these lines all the time in henna. Um, and there's a face painter. I don't think it's Nancy. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, anyway, but that does these and they're beautiful. So you have your little butterfly head right here. Okay. And then you bring it up and then you go thick and then when you wiggle back down, you go like this. And like, this is gorgeous. Like I love the freedom and the whimsy that a line like this creates. Like it just allows for beauty, right? And so we don't have to just keep that line. Like when you fall in love with a line and that's what happens when you're playing with your brushes, you'll fall in love with a line. So then um, if we have a peacock's head, um, yeah, play over here. Um, we've got this peacock's little head right here and we have the eye, which is so beautiful. Um, I usually have all the color to tell me where to put everything. So this is going to look a little different than usual, but whatever. All right. So there's our peacock and you can do three little lines with a dot or why not come up and add that crazy, beautiful little wispy on the front of her head or on the top of her wings or at the bottom of a tail, like learning what your brushes can do is one of the best ways we can really not just enjoy our jobs as face painters, but create these really exciting, um, fun, beautiful pieces of art. Um, and so Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the face painters out there that are working so hard to create these amazing brushes for us that are using their knowledge of our industry to go out and to figure out, you know, how many different round brushes we want to have. Um, there's a bigger angle brush that I didn't show you that she makes, and then there's also a rake brush. And a rake brush, if you've never played with one, this is going to be your new favorite thing to play with. You can use these in your florals. You can use them in your fur for your animals and stuff. You can use it to create lines for like speed and wind. Um, but you can see like it just puts in fur faster than anything else. And um, I don't love stencils. You guys know that. And but I love texture. And so this can be a really awesome way to add texture. And oh my gosh, did you see that? Okay, totally. You got to see this. I'm just going like this crazy over this bird and it's smearing the black just a little and smudging it. And now like 
next time I have to paint um, Harry Potter Patronus kind of stuff. Like I want, this is very ghosty, right? Um, so fun. Okay, so there are obviously a lot of fantastic um, things that we can do with our brushes. Um, and there are a lot of fantastic brushes out there. Uh, the last thing I want to tell you about them is when I'm painting with a brush, I feel like I am the guy dancer. My hand is the man, the brush is the woman, and the bristles are the dress. And so like a flamenco dress gives you all of these big, beautiful things. And a pencil skirt, you know, is a, the superpower um, business person that has the blazer and the pencil skirt. So figure out what job am I trying to accomplish and then figure out which friend you need to call to come and help you. Um, and that's just going to make a really big difference in your painting. So um, I'm excited to be doing more lives again. I'm excited to answer questions. Feel free to always reach out to me if you have ideas for lives. If you're like, I'd love to see your take on, you know, this, that or whatever. I'd love to try and help you guys out. Um, I do have 100 classes. Um, if you join YouTube, my channel as a member. 20 bucks a month and there's a hundred two hour classes that you can do stuff like this if that's interesting to you and then um i have decided to add a little like extra bonus thing today to see if this is interesting um but if there's anybody that is hoping for a tutorial on a specific design um i've there's a little at the bottom of the chat there's a little like it looks like a dollar bill with a money sign on it um i'm open for ten dollars a tutorial that we can just do right now all together. Um, no pressure, we can be done, that's fine for me. But I did wanna find a way to give you guys like actual, uh, a way to be like, hey, I want this. Um, so that's just something I'd love to start doing um, while we give people the option to do that for a second. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and put those down. I'm gonna read back through the comments real quick. Um, make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so cool that Laura Henry, that you're in the Maldives. Actually, my maiden name was Henry, so I used to be Lola Laura Henry as well. That was really fun. Took me two times reading that to be like, what is this? Um, okay, so I, Diane, I'm so happy to be sharing my knowledge. I love face painting and I love talking about it. So it's great that you guys have all come to the class. Um, so a design, it costs $10. Um, so Cactus Bee Crafts, whatever design you want, I'll do my best. And it's for everybody. So um, if you decide to buy a design, you're not just buying it for you. Everybody can stick around and we can work together. Um, while you know we finish up here real quick, I feel bad that this is our unicorn horn. Nancy, you got excited. So uh, free of charge, we're gonna go ahead and just do one quick unicorn. Deb, love you too, Deborah. Thank you so much for that. Um, Unicorn horns are tricky and um, they can be a challenge. And so there are a few different things that I've seen and it's a great thing to ask during uh, a brush class because brushes do some of the coolest unicorn horns. Let me just get our focus back. There we go, yes. Okay, so with an angle brush, um, you can do this uh, with color or with white. I usually like to do a color that has a white edge, but let me show you just a few little things. Um, we're going to pull down and over. So it's the shape of a leaf, right? We start with that shape of a leaf and then we just keep making more that get bigger as we go down. So that is a very simple horn. Um, you can also, if that's hard, there are two directions for everything, right? Um, so whether you um, put your shirt on over your head or on your arms first, like there's always two ways to do things. So you can always do it from the big side and then go up if that's easier. Um, clearly, it might be a little easier for me because that one looks a lot better. Um, but this is a very easy unicorn horn to do. There's also stencils out there that can help you with unicorn horns. Um, let me show you one more that I really like. And it depends on how big. These horns are the size that you could just put it right at the top. Um, but if you do like the horn shape, right, that's just a solid color, then 
you can, here, I need one more of those to show you the two different things. Oh my gosh, that's so fun, Deborah, that you've got a lady that's gonna get you to do a 50 year old Halloween party. That sounds really fun. Okay, so there are our unicorn horn shapes. Um, and now we're gonna go real quick and add the line work. So one way that we can do the lines, there are all kinds, right? Um, you could just outline it, you could just be done. I mean, on a horse, people would know that's a unicorn horn. Um, but we can just draw the letter S and then we just draw the S over and over. And we're just focusing on this one side of the unicorn horn. And then we just come back to the back and we do the other side like that. And that's a really pretty unicorn horn. So it's kind of the same idea here. It's just outlined, except instead of having to put it in really careful, you just draw a line, draw a line with whatever color you want to. And it's automatically going to be beautiful with the dark side and the light side because of the nature of one stroke. So that's really awesome. Um, one last one here. I'm gonna get a nice round brush load. Um, and this is where we're doing the same thing, except we're gonna use this. So we'll start with a little teardrop and we're going to use it as the outline. So we're painting the negative space. This is kind of tribally. Um, and, but I usually do it in white, so it doesn't look as dark and heavy. Um, but you can see that that is another unicorn horn option. And what you're trying to do is to keep the thin marks in between as thin as you possibly can. Um, just like that. Anyway, so super fun to paint unicorn horns. Um, I'm glad that helped. Um, Question about practicing with acrylic paint. Um, absolutely not, and here's why. Um, number one, I have face paint, so why not use face paint? But whatever products you use, whatever you do, not just products, but whatever brushes, what, whatever you do, you will get better at doing. So if you are practicing with acrylic paint, you will get better at using acrylic paint. Um, so even though like a bottle of acrylic paint versus a bottle of face paint, acrylic paint is a lot cheaper, right? Um, but you're gonna get really good at acrylic paint. And when you switch over to face paint, you're going to have more of a learning curve. And I would rather skip that step and just learn from the very beginning. Um, so, so that's what I would say, but um, I know that it's hard to, to bite the bullet, to spend the money on quality products, but it's, it's totally worth it. Um, I'll let you guys look at me again here to, to finish up. Um, but, I'm so happy that we've had the chance to spend some time together today and to talk about brushes because they really are such a crucial part of our job and of our hobby and whatever it is that face painting is to you. And so um, for those of you that weren't able to join us today, we missed you, but I'm glad you had the chance to watch this. Um, but know that for those that were here or if you weren't, um, totally reach out with brush questions. I'm happy to answer them for you. Um, I really enjoy um, talking about sparkling faces brushes versus other brushes on the market. Um, I think there's a link in the comment uh, back where you guys saw that this was going to happen, but I'll make sure there's a link to the shop in the YouTube um, description of this video. Um, I really appreciate about her brushes. Number one, the colors red is awesome um, because it's just bright, it's bold. Whenever I'm looking for one of her brushes in my kit, it's really easy. You can notice like they're there, um, but I love the um, spring, like how much uh, the texture of her bristles. So when I am painting with them, they're on the softer end. And so it takes a little bit to get used to that, but it allows for a more relaxed um, painting. So the drag and drop um, teardrops are much easier with her brushes. Um, because of that softness, they lay the paint down a little bit more evenly. Um, so anyway, every brush out there is a unique individual. <laughs> like it's crazy to me. And so to take the time to spend time with different brushes, but if you're looking for, um, oh, and I also absolutely love her little brushes. 
Um, there are a lot of brushes out there that are awesome, but I've never used the fine liner brushes that I've liked as well as those. So anyway, feel free to try these, to try whatever you want, to ask questions. Um, thanks for the wishes for my weekend. I hope you guys also have a great weekend and that there's a couple more um, fun, exciting things that are going to happen for you before the end um, of your fall when the snow's coming. Uh, for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, enjoy your summer. We are all jealous, <laughs> but love to you all.